from Tory. She has a blog called Ordinary Vegan. Um, she has almost a million followers on Facebook, and she promotes a plant-based diet. Um, so let's give her a nice round of applause. Hi, everyone. If that's too loud, just let me know. Um, first off, I'm so grateful that you're here because I was very worried no one would be here, that everyone would be jumping ship, and I don't blame you. Um, I know a lot of you have to leave at 10 for excursions, so maybe I'll try to get this done in an hour. Uh, my name, as you already know, is Nancy Montori, and I write a health and wellness blog called Ordinary Vegan. I advocate a plant-based diet for health and wellness. Like many of you, I was, I was confused about nutrition, and I, I read a lot of food advertising, I believed a lot of food trends, and I thought I was eating a healthy diet. On May 1st, 2011, everything changed. I went to see the movie, the documentary, Forks Over Knives, and I left that movie theater convinced that there was a connection between animal protein and chronic disease. And I wanted to scream it from the rooftops. You don't have to be sick anymore. All you have to do is change what you eat. So I started writing a blog. I furthered my education and got a certificate in plant-based nutrition from Cornell, um, Dr. Campbell's course. And here I am. Um, giving up an old part of yourself sometimes can be really scary. And that even applies to food. But when you start feeding your body a healthy plant-based diet, you are expressing and manifesting a new love. And that's a love for yourself. And there's nothing better than loving yourself and taking care of your body. If any of you out there are currently suffering from type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, the first thing I want to say is it's not your fault. There is so much that is out of our control, but not what we consume. We can change all that with this, the fork. And I like to say, think of a plant-based diet as a suit of armor. And when you go out in the world, you can fight the enemy. And that enemy is? Heart disease. What else? Diabetes. Yes, yes. Inflammation. Inflammation. So many things. There's, what you eat is so linked to all your health, no matter what it is. So, here I am. I want to inspire you. I want to serve you. If you I, want, I want this to be interactive. You know, I would like you guys to talk, ask me questions, do anything. I was supposed to have a very um, handsome young man chopping for me, but it looks like he's not, he didn't show up. Mm -hmm. So if anyone would like to help chop. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's get started. I got a few little. Um, I decided to um, present this recipe today because I like to make recipes that satiate you on many levels. A lot of people think that pl a plant based diet is just a lot of lettuce and salads and this and that. But you, you'll find on ordinaryvegan.net that I have a lot of recipes that satiate you. And if you have a spouse that doesn't eat plant-based, they will come and you make this some of the meals that I make, they're going to love it. I promise. Because they're big, they're bold, a lot of flavors, um, and um, a lot of familiar flavors that you grew up on and you know like to taste. So, it's called a grilled portobello mushroom over cauliflower mash smothered in vegan gravy. Mm. 
So let's get started. <clears throat> we, we're going to start with the mushroom, and we're going to grill that. And um, we remove the stem from the mushroom. We clean it really well and make sure you pat it dry. Don't throw this away. Vegetable scraps are your friends. Put them in a, uh, some kind of freezer bag. You know, just keep throwing them in the freezer and someday just throw them in a pot with water and make some, you know, fresh vegetable broth. So, I never like to throw away vegetable scraps. Now, let's talk about oil for a second because most of my recipes, to be honest, don't have oil. I, oil is 100% fat, but you know, sometimes a little oil isn't going to kill you. And I'm going to, uh, what I like to do is I put my oil in a little spray bottle. And then if I need a little oil, like for example on this so it doesn't stick to the grill, I'll just give it a couple of spritz. Um, I mean, it's entirely covered. And, you know, I probably used, I don't know, a 30th of a teaspoon or something like that. But it still does the job. So I highly recommend doing that. So we take this portobello mushroom, and all we do is put it on a hot grill. And you could use a, a greased grill pan on your stove, or you can go out, on, you know, to your grill, and just put it on medium high. Put this on there for five minutes on one side, five minutes on the other side, depending on how hot your grill is. And then you just want it soft and juicy with grill marks, and that's all done. And we'll see one of those, right? Won't we see one of those? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a grill here. There's no, oh, no open flame on ship. Um, that's good news. <laughs> um, so there you have it. That's easy enough. And um, so, and then the next thing that I'm going to make for you is the cauliflower mash. I love cruciferous vegetables. They have a magic ingredient called sulfur. And sulfur is essential to life for your bones, for your muscles, for your skin. They're, it's just one of the healthiest things you can eat. Not to mention the fiber and the vitamins. I cook with cruciferous vegetables maybe five to six times a week. I have so many cauliflower recipes on my website. Seriously, just search for cauliflower under ingredient. And I'm, I make a cauliflower fried rice, which is one of the most popular recipes on Ordinary Vegan. I make a cauliflower bechamel that I do in place of a cheese sauce and make a bag baked macaroni and cheese with this cauliflower sauce. It is absolutely delicious and I have um, made it for people and they don't even know it's cauliflower. I love, you know, hiding healthy ingredients for, in my recipes, especially for the kids at home. Um, so, we take one medium cauliflower and then we chop it up into little florets I try to make them all the same size. My little chopper's still not here. <laughs> hmm. He's going to be in trouble when he walks in. Um, but at any rate, you get the picture, I'm sure. Then we take this and we just put it on a baking sheet. I don't like to, for them to touch because they tend to steam when you, your vegetables touch on a baking sheet. And then you put it in a 400 um, degree oven. You put a little salt and pepper on it. You know, once again, if you want it, there's no reason to, to do it, but you could do it to make it a little more golden. You know, give it a spritz of oil. So then, when that's cooked, all you do is, in a food processor like this, I don't have any, um, here, I'm going to just chop a few more so that you guys can see. Anyone have any questions on um, chopping? Can you use that? Yes. How long in that oven from set for uh, 30 minutes. And, uh, but you know, keep a careful eye. All ovens are different, you know. 
So, you know, once that's cooked. Oh, that would be so nice of you. Thank you so much. Could you use a Vitamix instead of that, the food processor, mm -hmm. to do it? In a what? In a Vitamix? Yeah, you know, I like it to have the consistency of mashed potatoes. So you could actually just do like a potato masher because what you're going to do is you're going to add about a quarter cup of milk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll take that out. Um, so I guess the cooked one's going to come out so that I can show you. But I like to um, add some salt and pepper. I like a tiny bit of nutmeg. It just gives it, you know, a little flavor. I like a little cayenne pepper, but if you don't like heat, you know, don't use the cayenne because it definitely adds some heat. What kind of milk do you use? I like, personally, I always use almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. But if you have soy milk or hemp milk or, you know, rice milk, you could use that. I think the, um, the unsweetened almond milk gives it a nice richness. Yes, sir? Do you use any of the stem, the core? I don't, but once again, I would never throw that away. I would put it into a freezer bag, put it in the freezer, and then when, you know, I've got a bunch of vegetables in there, take them out, put them in a pot, add some water, and make my own vegetable soup. What's the name of the recipe you said? It's like the uh, cauliflower, it's like macaroni and cheese. Like page 76. Um, it's, um, On your website, it's called cauliflower. If you just search for cauliflower, it's going to come up. It'll say mac like macaroni and cheese? Yeah, okay. it will say that. Thank you. You don't, yeah. have, you don't have milk on this recipe. So how much I milk, know. How much milk do that you was a mistake, and it's a quarter cup of milk. When do you put that in? And you just add it a little at a time. You don't have to, you know, just pour it in there. You add it you, till you get the kind of consistency. You know, mashed potatoes are a very personal thing. Some people like them with chunks. Some people like them really, you know, like baby food. I like something, you know, in between. So I just like, I still like it to have a consistency, a texture. I think in, when you're eating plant-based food, I'm using the milk instead, oh. and on my website it has it correctly. It was just a typo. Not in addition. No, no. I'm so sorry for the confusion. But you could use vegetable broth instead of milk. But I think the milk adds a richness. You know, for that matter, you could add two tablespoons of um, sour cream or vegan sour cream or vegan butter, you know, you know, if you want it more, you know, rich. I like it as it is. I think it tastes delicious. I love the taste of cauliflower. And um, it tastes really good underneath that slice. What a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your cruise director, Andre, trusting you enjoyed a great evening on board. At this time, we would like to advise that we have received clearance from the local authorities in order for guests to proceed ashore. For guests on ships organized excursions, please check the front page of your daily program for your meeting times and locations. For all guests proceeding ashore today, please ensure you have your MSC cruise key card and government issued photo ID in hand, ready to disembark. We'd like to remind you that you truly need to take a government issued photo ID ashore, as it's very important when returning through the terminal building. Ladies and gentlemen, today the gangways are located on deck four midship and deck four forward. We'd like to remind you that all aboard today is at 5.30 p.m. and wish you an enjoyable day in Nassau, Bahamas. Okay, I'm back. Um, so, with the, they're going to bring out the cooked cauliflower and then we'll put all the ingredients in there and you can kind of see what the consistency is. Now, the star of the show. Seriously, once you make this vegan mushroom gravy, you'll never want any kind of traditional um, meat-based or turkey gravy again. It is really that delicious. So, here's what we got. 
We got a saucepan. Okay. And turn that on. Put it on three. Okay, so we don't blow the place up here. And um, yeah. and once again, here I am. I'm going to saute with vegetable broth. I always recommend sauteing with vegetable broth. And I'm going to use a third cup of vegetable broth. But I'll add more if my vegetables are sticking. I like to season that with a little salt and pepper. And there's no reason, honestly, to use oil. If you want to use oil, that's fine. But, you know, why? You, I find that people who use oil, you know, it starts sticking, they just start pouring the oil in there, you know. I, I'm guilty of that in the past. And there's no reason for it. What are you pouring? I'm pouring in vegetable broth. And I'm starting with about a third cup. And I'm going to season it with a little salt and pepper. And where's my, no, I don't see salt. And then that's going to heat up a, a tiny bit. While that's heating up, do we have any questions? Anyone? Oh, this? Oh, that's a salt. Oh, it's pink salt. OK. <laughs> They're fancy here. I'm not at home. Um, okay, so that's heating up. How many people here are already on a plant-based diet? Wow, that's awesome. And how many people are just getting started on a plant-based diet? Okay, that's great. Yeah. Seriously, bravo, that's wonderful. I, a lot of people reach out to me who are just getting started and it's so inspirational to hear from, say, a 70-year-old woman who tells me, you know, I'm sick of being sick. I want to take back my health. And, you know, and that's the reason I do this. You know, that's the reason I want to spread the plant-based message. And um, now that I'm starting to do podcasts, does anyone out here listen to podcasts? Oh, good. Or well, just search for Ordinary Vegan in iTunes. And I am reaching a, an entirely new audience with my podcasts. And it makes me so happy. I told this story in my last podcast about a, a young man who reached out to me, and he was from a very small village in Africa. In his entire village, he grew all the organic uh, fruits and vegetables for the village. And he reached out to me because he was concerned they wanted to all be vegan, and he was concerned about B12. Like, he wants to make sure his village gets B12 because they don't have access to things like uh, uh, supplements. And I'm like, wow, somehow I got into the ears of somebody in South Africa. I mean, they, it's just, it was just amazing. So I'm putting this half cup of onion into the vegetable broth. And I'm going to stir that up, one of these little stirs. And um, I like to just stir it and uh, cook it till it's pretty uh, translucent and soft. You know, that's all there is to it. And then I like to add about eight ounces of mushrooms. Now these mushrooms can be any variety that you like. Um, portobello, white, brown. Uh, I like to mix it up and use a variety of mushrooms. Mushrooms are also one of the healthiest foods that you can eat. And they have a lot of vitamin A and oh, I got a lot of mushrooms in there. So now, you're probably going to need a little more vegetable broth. There we go. Now, I'm going to add this gorgeous fresh rosemary. And um, I use about two tablespoons. I like to chop this up fine, but 
you know, for the sake of making this, I'm just going to put it in here. I also put in two tablespoons of thyme, and we'll do that. And I like to add a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning doesn't contain poultry. So just in case you were worried about that. And some people actually don't even like buying something um, with the word poultry on it. And so you can just make this yourself. It's just four different herbs um, that you can combine. Can you tell us what the herbs are? Yeah, it's on page seven. Okay, that saved me. It's in the book. Yes, I put it in the book. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I might uh, use a little less and, you know, just taste it as I go along. I might, if I'm using a tablespoon of fresh, I might go with a teaspoon of dried. And then, you know, just keep tasting it and adding more. There's nothing like fresh herbs in this. I mean, that just elevates it to another level. You know, I think that's one of the reasons it just tastes so delicious. So this is just all cooking down. The mushrooms are, um, are cooking down. And um, we're going to saute that for at least, you know, five minutes, I would say, depending on how high your, your flame is. And then you're gonna add two to four cloves of chopped garlic. And if you don't like garlic, you can definitely cut back on it. I personally love garlic and I love the flavor it gives to any recipe. And I also, I think Chef AJ said this, she said, where onion goes, garlic follows. And that's the way it is in my house. So, um, so I'm going to do that. And then, hmm. Now, I'm going to add a quarter cup. Ah. Yeah, where's Michael when you need him? <laughs> Do you have to use wine? No. Um, I use a quarter cup of um, very dry uh, red wine, not sweet red wine. But if you, you could add a tablespoon of sherry vinegar, and that would sound, kind of give it that flavor profile. Whoa. Good thing I didn't need a drink. Oh, look at this. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. I do, and I um, I keep all my vegetable scraps and put them uh, in freezer bags. Put them in the freezer, and then you know I just take them all out, whatever they are. You know, celery scraps or um, the uh, stem from the portobello mushroom, and I just put them in a pot with water. You know, and just you know let it simmer for you know half hour 45 minutes and you have a delicious vegetable broth <laughs> oh and do you carry your own pork screen boy scouts do okay Ooh. i'm liking that yeah how'd you get on the boat with that knife Okay, so I'm going to eyeball this, but it's uh, about a quarter cup of uh, good, dry, red wine. What kind of wine is it? This one, uh, personally, I'm, I'm not that fussy. I don't have a certain red wine that I use. People always bring a wine to my house, red wine. I don't really drink it, so I just, I just open a bottle and I always waste the rest of it because it goes stale. Yeah. But, um, oh yeah, you can definitely start smelling this. It smells so nice. I might even just uh, make it a little more fragrant. Add a little more rosemary. There's nothing like fresh rosemary. Okay, so then I like to add a couple of um, fresh sage leaves. And I believe, 
we have these right here. That's not roasted. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it doesn't look like this when it's roasted. It's soft and juicy and it's kind of like just juice falling all out of it and stuff. But he's going to, he made you a bunch of them. So you're going to get to taste this. But and it's going to have really nice grill marks. and. Um, but you know what? This just smells so nice. It's still, you know, it's a perfect vegetable. Do you roast them with a top down or, or on the... Um, good question. I would, I would put the top down if I was... I, I have a grill pan that I use on my stove all the time. I use it for so many things because I'll even grill an avocado and, you know, just to... You know, when I'm plating it, and I like the texture, the softness of the avocado. So I use my grill pan a lot on the stove, a really heavy duty grill pan. And I like to heat it up to, you know, like medium high. I like it to get really hot before you put that. See, I think what um, Chef Michael might have done is that uh, he didn't let his grill get really hot. So next time, Chef Michael, a really hot grill. So, okay, now, so my sage leaves, I put two sage leaves in here, and it's uh, just, uh, just a beautiful, gorgeous combination of herbs. Now, I got a little cheat sheet here because this is uh, my first cooking class here, and I didn't want to mess up, and I wanted to make sure that I gave, put everything in there that... Uh, it needed. So then, when this is all cooked down, gosh, this is just so nice. I mean, I'm going to show you. Uh, can you see it on the TV? But oh, where is the TV? Oh, where's my girl? Where's my girl? I guess you're. Back up. Oh, back up. <laughs> You're like just seeing me, right? Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. There. It's just, it's so beautiful. It smells so good. Mm. Hi! <laughs> oh, you came. Thank you so much. I, I know. I, I was begging people to come. I was so nervous nobody would show up. And I should like write a book, The Art of Begging, because I'm very good at it. Um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the mushroom, but it should be very juicy and... Um, you know what I did? You don't have to do this. You can do it without. But I put my oil in a little spritz bottle. We're going to have to start again. It's just like, no. I like a, I like a glass or a non-BPA. Yeah, of course, you know. So, yeah, we just do a little spritz, and that's all there is to it. Um, about five minutes on both sides. But it really depends on how hot your grill is or your grill pan. Uh, medium high heat, so you have it. It's you. You want to really get it going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, so next, any questions so far? Uh -huh. None. Okay. So then, what we're gonna do is um, stir. I, I did. I put it in here. I think I did. But I'm gonna put the. Three cups of vegetable broth in here. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. And then I'm going to lower it and simmer it. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to make our secret ingredient. And that's our gravy paste. This is absolutely delicious. This is what just takes it to another level. So. I will take, let's take this little bowl, and let's see if I have a big spoon. I don't, but, oh, I do. Okay. Okay. So what I do is take two tablespoons of uh, tamari or a low sodium soy sauce, and then I take 
two tablespoons of one of my favorite, all-time favorite ingredients, nutritional yeast. And I'm pretty certain most of you are familiar with nutritional yeast. I always buy my nutritional yeast fortified with B12. It's a great way to get that some extra B12 into your diet. And as vegans, as we know, there's no B12 in plants. What brand is that? This one uh, is Red Star. I've never seen this one before, but uh, they're all good. This one is this fortified. You have to make sure that it is fortified. Always. What brand do you usually use? Um, Bob, Bob's Red Mill. I always use those products. So, and always, always GMO free. I hope you were there yesterday for the, uh, uh, the speaker who spoke about glyphosate. Nobody should be consuming glyphosate. And I, um, I have a, I'm doing an entire podcast about glyphosate. Uh, when I get back, <laughs> oh. I'm really strong. I do Pilates and yoga and I hike. So I don't know why I'm having a hard time here. Okay, so. Your, your recipe says three tablespoons? Yes. Oh, thank you. I was just going to make sure I was going to go back. So take about three tablespoons. As we all know, Nutritional yeast, or most of us know, is a deactivated yeast. So it doesn't make anything rise. It's, uh, it's just so good for you, and it's a vegan's best friend. So then I'm going to add two tablespoons of flour to this paste. And then I'm just going to mix it all together. And it's going to be kind of thick. And don't be afraid of that. What kind of flour? Well, that depends on your diet. If you're using, if you're on a gluten-free diet, use a rice flour. Um, if not, you can use a whole wheat flour. To be honest with you, it's just your preference. I, I think you know, if you have one kind of flour in your pantry, that's enough. You know, I. I worry about people thinking they have to go out and buy a lot of expensive ingredients to be on a plant-based diet, and that's really not true. And so I don't, I try to keep my exotic seasonings to a real minimum, <laughs> you know. I do have, um, I do have a lot of Indian flavors, but I find that Indian spices really elevate a lot of recipes. So, you know, but you can buy that once, I certainly will have mine for the rest of my life, probably. So, and that's that. So, just to get an idea of how thick this is. Uh, you know, it's just a really, see that? Yeah, it's a real paste. Okay, so now, this, by this time, should have been, um, should be ready, but of course, it's probably not, um, because this is not the real deal. Now, I'd like to add a little, a little bit of pepper. Don't add salt yet until you add your paste, because we're adding uh, tamari or soy sauce, and there's no reason to overly salt this recipe. Okay, so the chef was kind enough to make me a beautiful little paste. And if anyone wants to look at that, it's just, you know, once it's all together, you can just see just why this can make the gravy so much better, you know? Yeah, exactly, a roux. Good one. Can you freeze this gravy portions? So yes. It doesn't separate? Absolutely. You don't have any oil in it, so you're not going to get that kind of separation. It's not you're not you don't have that fat. You know, you really get separation when you have a lot of fat in something. So, 
I'm going to add Chef Michael's paste. So you add that in and you whisk it constantly. You know, you really want to whisk it well. Wow. So is this a chunky gravy? No. no this not. is going to just, this is just going to make it a thicken it and add a lot of flavor. And you really have to make sure that that is really whisked in there really well, okay? It's, oh my God, it's so yummy, honestly. I just, <coughs> you know, when, if you don't like the consistency of the um, gravy and you want to make it, you know, like a smoother gravy, you know, you can put this in your um, food processor or blender and blend it down. But I'm telling you, there's no reason for it, you know, unless you just want something that maybe is a little um, prettier. Uh, so, so we're going to bring that paste to a boil, and then uh, we're going to just keep stirring for another minute, and uh, our gravy is done. So, what we will do and you guys are going to be able to taste all this. But basically when I plate this, I like to cut my portobello mushroom <coughs> like that. And then I put, is this cooked? Okay. So we'll just get this little cauliflower mash. It cut like what? Was that in half or quarters or what? I can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep thinking you can see because of the. But I'll show you. This is the way I like to cut it. Sliced. Just sliced. Thank you. You know, um, I would. To me, this is one serving. Okay. I, this is just the perfect serving. And what I'll do with that. Let me make sure that you see just get the full picture any questions are the samples going to be gluten-free is that Roger Roger Sorry, <laughs> that's my uh, sous chef over there Roger everyone say hi to Roger hi Roger hi. I'm late. <laughs> I met Roger here last year and um, he has just the most beautiful aura. He's such a n nice, kind human being. He is vegan. Is this true, Roger? Um, you decided on a vegan diet for uh, animal welfare? That's correct. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and also, you know, maybe Roger can even, if he's up for it, you know, um, and tell us his story. But Roger's a bodybuilder. <laughs> And he's in amazing shape. And you know. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, Roger. Can we get the talk to that? I'll make it quick so it doesn't take all the time. No, with, take your time, Roger. Hi, so a lot of you guys will know me, but my name is Roger. I'm originally from Panama. Central America, but I've been living in Houston, Texas for about 11 years now. And I turned vegan about 13 years ago, because I'm going about 14 years. And yes, I, uh, I train. And one of the reasons why I started training is because I wanted to prove that you can be muscles, that you can be strong on a vegan lifestyle. And uh, actually, we use it as a way of activism, as you guys might not know. There's quite a few other uh, vegans athletes, which, you know, when we perform on stage or do any kind of uh, event, we always represent veganism from away. Like for example, I like kale chair now uh, because I love kale. So, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was a struggle at the beginning, like any other vegan. You know, you have family rejections and all kind of society things going on to you. But if you have a strong belief, uh, I believe actually that you can overcome anything, and that can be applied for anything in life. So um, it was a little bit of a struggle at the beginning, like anyone, you know, what to eat, what not to do and such and such, but since I had so much love for the animal, I knew at that point I was not going to go turn back. So regardless of what you put in my face, I was like, nah, it's animal product at that point that way. So that helped me to keep my, continue moving forward and never look back. 
go back and give me or whatever that case was. So um, it was just a struggle was, okay, so now what I do, what I eat, what I have to do, or how do I turn this vegan lifestyle into something that's gonna make me uh, successful. Well, 14 years later now I thrive through vegan lifestyle. It's, it's just no other way that I'll see a uh, way of living. People will always tell me, hey, do you wanna go back and eat? So like, are you kidding me? I've been doing this for 14 years. And what's funny is that my family, when I go back and see them, they say, oh, are you still on that diet? I'm like, how the fuck are you going to go back and see So it, it is one of those things. But uh, like I say, I use veganism as an activist, and especially the bodybuilding part of it. Uh, but it's not the only thing. You know, you got animal work for people that love animals. You got people that do it for the health reasons. What are the reasons for you? Just look at it. Make it, make it, you believe it, make it strong, and, and just continue doing it. And you got great people like that, which is great. And that's how the people move And she pre prepared an awesome recipe. And you got so many other great speakers. So and that's that's how I see it. Thank you, Roger. Roger, can I ask another question? Do you use protein powders? I get that question that's a lot. And um, my first question, my, my, my answer to that is, is I'm not an anti-supplement in person. I'm not against any uh, supplementation uh, whatsoever, but uh, I believe that you always have to have uh, a whole food plant-based diet. My, my diet right now is about 90-10, which is 90% of my meals come from whole food, and I have a 10% which I can you know eat out or whatever. So I, I don't use any, any protein shake at the moment, but I'm not against it, because if I, uh, let's say if I'm gonna travel and on my competition stage, just just my case, uh, supplement will help me to gain a little bit extra protein with low fat, a low calorie. So it's it's a it's an advantage in that sense. But I prefer to go with whole food, which is what I, what I do most of the time. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. The reason I asked Roger that is because I get that question a lot about protein powders and. I actually have a lot of companies who reach out to me about um, advertising and uh, protein powders on my website. And I personally don't use protein powders, and I heard that they had the um, they had a little um, session here um, with a lot of the plant-based athletes, and I guess you know 99% of them don't use protein powders. So, it's just something to know. Okay, we got the cauliflower mash, and we're gonna let it rip. Okay. What vegetable broth do you use? Okay. So, what I like to do... She didn't say it. She didn't say I didn't hear it. What? What vegetable broth do you use? I use whole foods vegetable broth. Yeah, it's low sodium, it's non-GMO, it's organic, and you know, it has all those words that I like. Um, and I shop a lot at Whole Foods. I'm trying not to, this is probably not the right consistency, but so what I will do, just because it wasn't cooked well enough, but you're going to get the real deal. And there was a question about whether it's gluten-free or not. It's not that sticky. If what is gluten-free? <laughs> Absolutely. You can just use gluten-free um, flour in the uh, in your gravy, and then you're going to be gluten-free. Uh, nutritional yeast does not contain gluten, and if you use tamari as opposed to soy sauce, you will, uh, that will be gluten-free. Okay, so, basically, I like to put my mash right in the middle. Any questions? Questions? And I like to plate so then I've got my this is how I present it I put my mushrooms over my cauliflower mash 
And then the very, very best part, I take my gravy and I just, this is obviously not the right consistency, but I will pour my gravy all over. And you know what? This gravy is so healthy. Use as much gravy as you want. And then, voila, we have it right over here, all cooked properly. So, can we see it on the, can you show it on the Yeah. Yeah, the, you, the onions are, should, you're not going to see those onions. Oh. Okay. i got to learn how to use this camera for next time. Yeah, so it's just, you just have your gravy all over it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be totally different. That should have cooked for like 30 minutes. And unfortunately, uh, we were going to try to get done by 10 today so that people would be able to um, go on their excursions. Um, but now, does anybody have any questions about getting started on a plant-based diet? I know there's some new people here. No? Oh, hi. Yes. Right. Okay. I always, I personally always use parchment paper, uh, especially after hearing Dr. Bernard's um, session the other day. I'm not going to use aluminum foil anymore. You know, uh, obviously, even aluminum foil can be toxic. So, uh, I always use parchment paper. I would, you don't use it if you're broiling something, obviously, because it can catch on fire. But if you're, it goes up to, I think, maybe 450 degrees on a baking sheet. Yeah, so I, has anybody here had any experience with the silicone mats? Okay, can you tell us? Yeah, so uh, if you coat it with veggie broth and then just use less veggie broth, it will get caramelized. You're probably oh, okay. using too much veggie broth. Okay. But you do have to watch it because if it runs out, then it's, it's going to burn. So okay. just oh, kind of so play, you... play with the amount of veggie broth and oh, you will okay. get it caramelized. It takes okay. a little bit of yeah. practice. Because it just seems like it just kind of cooks, but it doesn't really yeah. I don't use them, so um, but I've heard so many people mention it. So are you saying you put some vegetable broth on the uh, mat? Yes. Okay. Co coat, the veg coat the veggies and then put the veggie broth over it. And then it's going to evaporate, right? But she's saying it's not getting caramelized, so I'm guessing she's probably using too much. Okay. Okay. Good. Great information. Thank you so much. Hi. Did you say coat the vegetables? That's a good question, you know? And I look in the labels of everything I eat, so I have never looked to see what this is made out of. And, um, you know, what's interesting is, no, it doesn't tell you because it's not a food you consume. So they probably don't have to tell you what's in it. How many people are gluten free? And don't want the gravy. One, Just two, two, no, three. Were you, did you have a hand up? No. Behind you. Three, oh. Oh, I didn't know someone was back there. Okay. I'm sorry, I've had my back to you all the time. Hi, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, okay, now you had a question. Yes, hi. Um, is there some reason you're not using amino acid uh, instead of your tamari? Amino acid. You know, only because I know so, so many people who use amino acids instead. Yeah, no, there's One absolutely second, no reason. People are gluten free, please raise your hand. Uh, I just don't use them. You know, I think everybody is. Where's that gravy? They're gluten free. Oh, they put the tongue. 
Well, you're not going to get the full experience. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I would have made it especially for you guys. I thought, didn't know, didn't think of that. I have a lot of uh, gluten-free and soy-free uh, recipes on my blog. Okay, how about more questions? What do you eat in a day? What do I eat in a day? I will probably start my day with uh, a bowl of um, oatmeal. I'll put a tablespoon of ground flax in that. I like to top it with like bananas or, uh, or any kind of fruit. And then I drizzle a little maple syrup. Um, and uh, did I mention hemp seeds? I eat a tablespoon of hemp seeds in ground flax every day. I, it's just the perfect protein. It's so healthy for you. It's great if, it, if you have any kind of uh, anxiety. It's a great way to start your day. You know, it alleviates anxiety too. And then, and then for lunch, I might have a chickpea and sun-dried tomato sandwich. Uh, and uh, dinner, like I, I really like to eat foods that satiate like this, or you know, a, maybe even just a stir fry. I want to. I'm glad you brought this up because I want to say uh, what I always tell people, especially when they're just starting out. Keep it simple. You know, just to always have this in your head. Think of your plate cut in fourths. One fourth is vegetables, one fourth are legumes, one fourth are grains, and one fourth is fruit. And then you have a little small plate here. I don't like to overdo the healthy plant-based fats. I, I like to keep it to maybe 10% of my calories, but you can eat more. You know, they are healthy fats. And that includes avocados, nuts, and seeds. And so you can just go to a restaurant and this is your plate, you know? Give me a, a thing of rice, give me a thing of vegetables, give me a thing of fruit. Or you can make this into a soup. Or you can make it into a stir fry. It's just that you just need to keep it simple. It doesn't, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be confusing. Uh, and also I have on my website, which you can uh, download, is my uh, vegan food pyramid, which is uh, very popular. Ha. You're making a lot of gravy there. How long do you keep it in the refrigerator and can you freeze it? I would say in the refrigerator, probably up to five days. I, I would go with three, but five days I would say. And I would freeze it. I would make a lot and I would freeze it. And then just grab it, put it out in the morning, and you know, in your refrigerator. And by the time you come home, <laughs> and I, I would honestly say that this gravy tastes delicious over anything. You know, it could be, you know, you could just come home and have uh, have some vegetables and uh, some potatoes, and you know, just put the gravy over it, and you, you know, you're gonna really feel satiated. And when I say satiated, I just mean feeling full and um, and like, oh, okay, I just had a great meal and without all the fat and the kind of things that usually make you feel bad. And you don't feel bloated, you feel good. Hi. Hi. What is your website? My website is ordinaryvegan.net. .net. 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 I would think, I, I would definitely want gravy on that though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Give them lots of gravy. That's the whole. They're being on them. Lots of gravy on those plates, guys. They should be drenched in gravy. Hi. Hi. To answer the question about the bread, tamari is a better choice because the bread is a job. Oh, Bragg's has MSG? I didn't know that. She, um, uh, she said that Bragg's has MSG. Um, Bra Someone was asking why. Yeah, I didn't know that. 
I've, I've never heard that either. Um, uh, this couple over here uh, have a, um, a website called The Food Pharmacy, and they, um, they do a lot in the vegan world and the plant-based world, and I think she probably knows what she's talking about. So, How about the nutritional yeast? No, the nutritional yeast is fine. Are their salad dressings are fine? Pardon? Their salad dressings are fine too? Yes. Yes. Just uh, anything that might be alive. Wow. Yeah. They wanted to know. I love, I mean, not the bread, you know, tamari. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you use instead of the bread? I use tamari as well. Yeah, I like tamari too. Tamari's especially non-GMO tamari. And yeah. Okay, I saw some other hands. Who else? Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Absolutely. I would, I would focus on recipes that are really going to satiate. You know, I wouldn't stop feeding them a lot of salads or, you know, just, you know, a thing of rice and a thing of beans. And um, I would try to make uh, a lot of things with big flavors. How's it taste, guys? I didn't make it. Does it good? Do they put enough gravy on it? They should. No. More gravy. No, we need more gravy. Come up and get more gravy. It's all about the gravy. Okay. Yeah, it should, you got to smother it in the gravy. That's the whole point. Um, yes, hi. Yeah. Well, you know what would be interesting? I've never used that paste as a base for soup. I've always just used that paste for gravy. But I think especially an Asian-style soup uh, would be delicious with that paste in vegetable broth. Okay, you think people are getting enough gravy now? Please say you're getting up there. Oh, you look at you, slick in the plate. Take a picture of that. Slick in the plate. But I was like, where's my gravy? Me, uh, I didn't know that. Mine never hang around that long. I don't either. But my body, Yeah, that's a little, that's a website they have over there. I don't know. You can talk to Matt and see what they're not exactly under the shirt. Yes? I had a thought about what you said about throwing away the wine because it gets old. If you were to put it in an ice cube tray and freeze it, you could actually use that ice cube. And brilliant. And that way you've got it always on That's hand. brilliant. So That's very good. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, someone made a suggestion to me, everyone. Yeah. A really good suggestion. She said, instead of throwing away my old wine, put it in an ice cube tray, freeze them into little ice cube things, and then when I'm going to cook with the red wine, just throw it in there. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, you. brilliant. Anyone else have any like great suggestions wine. like that? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like to waste wine. I don't blame you, honey. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't waste I only have so much control. Um, and, by the way, uh, someone just mentioned this gravy seems watery. This gravy is not watery. Um, and, and if you like a thicker gravy, all you have to do is make a like a tablespoon of uh, uh, flour with a tablespoon of water. You know, make a little paste and do the same thing. Just keep adding it to your gravy until you have the right consistency. Doesn't that? Suppose you would use the emergency. That would make it thicker. So this is mushroom based. Yeah, that would be great too. Yeah, but like I said, you can put that in a food processor, I said at the beginning. Yeah, immersion. I'm with you. I'm with you. Isn't that portobello mushroom so satisfying though? Yeah, I mean, this is just the kind of meal you just, 
you know, you know, it's like a, a Sunday meal for the family. And nobody's going to complain. You know, make a big uh, thing of roasted uh, carrots with it. I always suggest eating a leafy green on the side of for everything. And I, sure, absolutely. What was the question? Yes, it's too thin, but it's not in with that recipe. Okay, so. Like I said, a little flour, a little water, paste, and make it thicker. Um, I'm still not putting a lot of gravy on there. I don't know what's up. I'm like, give us some gravy. We want gravy. I'd use that cauliflower mash. Yeah. I would do that, or you could do a bread stuffing. Uh, he, uh, this gentleman, Al, has a really good idea, is to take that mushroom and stuff it with a, a bread stuffing, you know, like a, like you would do in the old days with a, the T word, and stuff that uh, mushroom and then pour the gravy over that. There's so many different things you can do. It's all about the gravy and about the texture and the juiciness of the mushroom. Okay. Well, I feel like we're, everybody's uh, eating and talking. And do we have any more questions? I really want to thank all of you so much for being here. I am so grateful. If you get a minute, if you could fill out the form and you know, to get, give them some feedback uh, on the cooking.